I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. And I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. I receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living, everlasting seed word of Almighty God. And I will never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Now let's just uh, uh, release a little hospitality. Tell your neighbor to the, both sides of you and to the back that you're glad that they're here today. And if it wasn't for you, they'd be the best looking one here today. All righty. Come on, greet somebody, greet somebody. Greet somebody, greet somebody, greet somebody. Amen. Let's get your hand out. Your hand out. Everybody got a hand out? We're going to try to go through this thing. I missed my brother. He's sitting there the whole time. <laughs> All right. Good morning, King. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> we've been, we've been uh, talking about uh, the fundamentals of faith. I know it says the five elements of faith. Uh, and we said that the, uh, our objective in teaching on uh, the fundamentals or the five elements of faith, our objective is, number one, uh, to bring this house to a new level of consecration and dedication uh, and an understanding of faith righteousness and the blessings that it brings. Uh, you want to walk in faith, uh, but in order to walk in faith, you'll definitely have to go to a new level of uh, consecration and dedication uh, in your walk with God. So when you talk about the, uh, the walk of faith, and everybody is called to this walk of faith. Amen. Say, I'm called to the walk of faith. I'm called to the walk of faith. Faith is now. Faith, is now. faith, comes, by hearing the word. faith comes by hearing the word. I'm called to the word of God. I'm to the word of God. It, is it is my first work as a believer. As a believer. Now, I love singing, but I can't sing. But, I, I, you know, I love good singing. And uh, I praise on my own, but uh, uh, the word is vital to your increase in the things of God. Now, I'm not just talking about financial, I'm talking about to your wisdom, uh, to your understanding how the kingdom works. Uh, to the fruit of the Spirit uh, coming into your life. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is a produce. You know, produce. What is produce? You go through the produce section. That's the section that comes up out of the ground. You know, it produces. The Word of God is the only way you are going to get the produce, the fruit of God in your life. What is the fruit of God? Unconditional love, joy unspeakable, full of glory, amen, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, we, we don't like to hear too much about that, but, you know, long-suffering is just what it means, you can suffer long, but you're not going nowhere, you can suffer long, but you're going to still be in God, you can suffer long, Amen. And you're going to still do what God called you to do. You could be suffering, but you still going to be present and accounted for. Amen. Whatever God called you to do. What did Mary tell the servants? She said, whatever he tell you to do, just do it. You could be suffering long, but you still going to work out your assignment. Amen. You're not going to go AWOL. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to charge God with folly. 
You know, you're not going to say, Lord, I thought it was going to be different, but you know, I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh-huh. No, no, no. You're just going to suffer and stay with it. Amen. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Amen. The only way you can experience the presence of God in your life is through the Word of God. Amen. And I don't know why we always try to do other things. It's the Word for Matter of fact, you can't even pray without the Word. You ever notice you're trying to pray without really having a diet in the Word? You can't last. You ever be praying and looking at the clock? Yeah, I'm the only one that did that. You be praying and looking at the clock, you be praying and praying, and you end up and then two minutes went by. That's your cue. You need some Word in you. You know, so you might as well get up off your knees and open your Bible and get to read. Amen. You can't even pray right without the Word. The word is the key to our existence. And the more words you get, your word level is everything. See, your word level will heal you, you know, without even you claiming it. You can just start getting filled with the word because the word's going to do what it has set out to do. Isaiah 55, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will never return to me void. But it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper where it is sent. Wherever you send the word, it's going to prosper. You send it in your body, your body going to straighten up. I didn't say overnight. So you got to stay with it. Especially, and, and, and you got to get your, you got to get your word level. You got to faith. You people, you got to get your faith up past what the doctor said. You know, what, what, what evil people have said spoken over you. You know, you got to get your word level over that. That's why it says, let God be true and every man a liar. Right. Amen? What, the, the verse in Romans that says, will their, will their unbelief affect our belief? No. God forbid. If you're believing something and you're standing on the word of God, you got word for it and you're continuing in that word, amen, you will overcome the naysayers. The doctor report. You know, we know the doctor report is a fact, but the word is the truth. You hear me say this all the time. And what do we do? We put the truth on the fact. And we keep it there until we turn this fact into another fact that lines up with the truth. Because God can't lie. I said, God, tell your neighbor, God can't lie. He can't lie. So if cancer is coming in your body today, it's going to go. Because God can't lie. What's your job? Your job is to stay with the word. Now, we said that five elements of faith. There's the hearing aspect. There's the receiving aspect. There's the speaking aspect. And there's the acting. The hearing, the receiving, the believing the speaking, and the acting. And we said faith lives in two places. I'm going to try to follow this outline because we're in class. We're in class. You know? You know, uh, the teaching of the word, the preaching is for the leaven. Teaching is so that you can go to the next level and live the abundant life. Teaching is so that you'll know how to get your healing whether the minister is around or not. Amen. Teaching is so that you can prosper whether you're on a, a hostile job and the, the supervisor, the managers don't like you. They try to get you fired. And even if you do get fired, you can give God praise because you're still going to walk in your prosperity. It might not be in that place, but it's going to be. Most of God's people working where it ain't God's no way. But you got to work. Don't quit your job. Don't work. You don't eat. But I'm saying we got to get into purpose so we can move into the place that God has for us. Amen? So we said faith lives in two places. It has two houses. Now watch this. Faith has to be in your, your heart. 
Romans 10, 10, with the heart man believes, and it has to be in your mouth. Now, watch this. Remember when you were small and you used to go to the doctors, especially as a kid, and the doctor would take that, uh, look like that uh, wooden stick, yeah, yeah, like it, uh, on the, the end of your popsicle, popsicle stick, and he put it in your mouth. And he says, hey, ah, ah, ooh. Ooh. He tell your mom, mm. Yeah, I'm going to give you a prescription. That's, that's a dirty mouth. Do you know if you speak negativity? I'm not talking about cussing as we know it. Cussing, according to the word of God, is negative speech. Now, don't believe that here. said, Pastor King said, y'all can cuss sometimes. I did not say that. I said cursing in actuality is a negative disposition in your mouth. Forget the four-letter word. If you always are talking negative, you're cursing. So faith lives in two places. In order for your faith to work, you, you got to start agreeing with God. You got to say what God says regardless of the symptom. You know, you hear me say that all the time. I believe God. You say this with me. I believe God. Regardless of the symptoms. Regardless of the circumstances. I side with the word of God. You, you got to side with the word. And the symptoms will say. The symptoms will say you're broke. You, you, you can't even meet rent or mortgage and you don't know how you're going to do it. But the word says that Jesus became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. You say, well, Pastor, you, <laughs> I hope this works out soon because I got the eviction notice. Well, I don't know if he'll deliver you in this situation, but I do know this. If you begin to get yourself in the word of God on a daily basis, I guarantee you God will put you in a place. Amen. Remember he said in Psalm 66, 12, he said he allowed men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire. We went through the water. But then he, he guided us into a wealthy place. We've been laying door for a night. You know. You know, we're, we're all of us, all of us have an arrogant disposition. I'm talking about myself. And, you know, now, testings and trials, you know, they come to take us off the word. But if you don't get off the word, if you don't get offended, you know, these testings and trials come what does offended mean? It means you get off the word. Amen. You get off the word. Amen. And 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 into another uh, realm that God has not called you to. People get offended. Leave church. They don't leave the bar. I don't get to leave the club. Folk got sat outside the club. They still back. Hey. Hey. Did they do renovation? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I know we was over there. We ducked the bullet went over there. They ain't stopped clubbing. Get offended. They stopped going to church. They don't stop clubbing. Then all those celebrities got their kids in college. You read about that little scandal? Folks ain't stopped going to college. Folks go to college and still don't get the job they want. They don't stop. Don't let the devil get you offended, get you off the word, and out of the will of God. Tell you, David, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. It said, now faith has to be in two places, in the heart and in the mouth. Now we said the Greek word for faith is pistos, and it means to be fully persuaded, fully convicted, fully assured. Amen? And we said that uh, Jesus told the woman after she got her healing, he said, woman, 
Your persuasion in my word. Your, your, your conviction concerning my word. Your assurance concerning my word hath made you whole. See, you know, people think, well, faith, oh, no, faith message. Well, what is that going to do? That's what we're supposed to be living by. We're supposed to be living by our conviction in the word. Our persuasion in the word. You know, if you are convicted enough and you are persuaded enough and you are assured enough, amen, that God wants to bless you and increase you in spite of where you come from, amen, in spite of your pedigree, if you walk in that, you will begin to ascend to a higher place, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God, your faith will navigate you into a place that is exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think because that's God's way. And he wants to bless you so, and, and, he, and he wants you to do it in a way where he gets all the glory. Well, did your parents give you the money for the business? No. I'm taking care of that right now. Oh. Well, did, did you get the education? No. Didn't get a chance to go to college. So, well, well, how did you get to this place? I followed the word day and night. I got my conviction. I got my persuasion. I got my assurance by the word of God. I started to hear the word of God, and I started following that way, and I just started to ascend. I'm talking about you. Jesus said, your conviction your persuasion, your assurance will take you into your healing, will take you into your breakthrough, will take you into your deliverance, will take you into the desire of your heart. But it's a pressing way. You know, most, you know, most Christians, you know, you know, a lot of nice to feel like this too. You know, we feel like we go to church to do God a favor. The first thing when something comes up, Lord, you know, I, you know, I need this, I need you to do this for me. But you know, I did go to church two out of four Sundays. But I got nothing to do with it. Well, sure. the, the word of God says, "Forsake not the assembly," but it is your conviction, your time that you spend with God that gives you conviction. You begin to get convicted that God wants you to do better, that you can't be blessed. Amen. You know, when I've when I, when been in business for many years, I've seen people who uh, <laughs> yeah, weren't that smart walking in seven figures. You get to talking to them, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be stuck to think about how they get how they get that. Some of them, their parents handed it down to them. But some of them, they just had a niche and they found their niche and they walked in it. I went back to my class reunion about 10 years ago, and uh, I saw, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, uh, his, name was Ed, well, his first name was Eddie, we'll give you Eddie. And, you know, Eddie couldn't even learn the football plays. We would have to tell him, just go this way. <laughs> Again! <laughs> Again, like we could run this play all the time. Just go this way and knock this person down and knock this person down. So I went to the school with you, and I said, is, is that Eddie? Got a nice little tan on him. And he looked good. Y'all you know, folks, they look like money. And uh, they said, yeah, that's, that's Eddie. And so he even brought out Gerhard Tree Service. Eddie? <laughs> Mr. Can't Remember the Plays, Eddie? He started chopping down trees for a living. And kept chopping. And kept chopping. And kept chopping. And kept chopping. And why everybody talking about he can't do this, he can't remember play? Obviously, he can count his money. Because the buzz was all throughout the all throughout the reunion. Eddie is a millionaire. Now, some people do that without the Lord. And I feel for them. Because the Bible says it's hard for a rich man, somebody who, who becomes rich without God, 
it's, it's hard for them to trust God. Because they feel like they, they made it. They, you know, self-made. But you know, a man can receive nothing without the, the, the favor of God. They just don't know it. So, your assurance, your persuasion, your conviction that comes from you being in the presence of God, amen, that will make you whole. Now remember, there's no faith outside of encountering the word of God. See, Pastor Gang, keep on talking about the word of God. That's our way, people. That's our way. You can run around the church all you want to and slide into the altar like you slide in the home plate. But you're not going to get nothing without the word being nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. You got to hear it. You got to receive it. You know, when we said, I'm going to, you know, uh, let's go down here to the receiving. Point number three. He said, we got to hear it. You got to hear the word. Somebody say, I got to hear, the word. hear the, word. the word. Then it say, I got to receive the word. It means to accept or receive something as being legitimate. You to, to, to be open to further listening. People hear the word, but they don't receive it. What do we say? No, I don't believe that. I don't believe God wants you to be prosperous. All the preacher wants you to do is have is get your money. I, 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 we, Jamie and I were laughing about this the other night. Uh, I was doing a business meeting here one time, and uh, the brother said, Oh, Pastor, you're going to pimp us for money again? I said, Yeah, obviously he do not know what we're talking about. <laughs> Trying to get it to you. Trying to get it to you. See, so some people, they've been in the world so long, and the mind is so. Uh, uh, carnal to spiritual things and they so stingy. Now, uh, the last 76 a game I went to, I, I got so upset, I watched the clock. They went five minutes without making a bucket. Up and down, up and down. I was sitting on the floor. You know, I was sitting in the VIP section, up and down. I watched him go up and down, up and down, up and down. Over five minutes, didn't score a bucket. I left. <laughs> Waste the money. Now, I couldn't go to the ticket booth and say, for this poor playing, y'all can at least give me back my money. <laughs> no. Then my son and I, we were sitting in the, right behind the, the batter's box. Right behind the cage at the Phillies game. They only had to make one more game. This was two years ago. One more game to seal a playoff spot. They lost all of them. <laughs> and they started losing so bad. Me and Kenny just got up. We just started to tour Citizens Stadium. <laughs> That's how bad they get. But we couldn't get our money back. You got to receive the word as being legitimate and be open to further listening. That's what it means to receive. The word is legit. I receive the word. Then we said, you got to believe it. Look, uh, uh, to believe means to commit to God and what God has said. Believing is a commitment of the heart. Romans 10.10. 10. Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to him that believe. Then we said there's the speaking element. It means to call, to command, to agree with God out of your mouth. And then there's the action. James 1, 22 to 24, uh, be ye hearers, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. The baby said, yes. Thank you, baby. Now, we said that. Uh, let's go back up here. We said there's, there's three reasons why we need to really master faith. Number one, Hebrews 11, 6 says you can't please God without it. Or you can't 
uh, you can't fully gratify. You can't uh, uh, you can't gratify God entirely without it. God only has one need, and that's to be believed Amen. by his creation. Like, he must be believed. Amen? And the word of God says this. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And number two, and uh, pe people forget this. And that he will reward you if you seek him. Now we hear a lot about what well, we got to believe God. But God will reward you for seeking him for your healing. What does that mean? That means you, you in the word. Like a child. Pastor, pa Pastor Elder prayed over me. Pastor Dixon prayed over me. Pastor Gaines prayed over me. Ain't nothing happened. But what did you do? Stop leaving your Quality of life to other people. You can't do that. Just like, you know, uh, my mom used to have a, uh, she had some Pentecostal friends and she used to come home some days and she would come home from some services and she said, boy, those Pentecostals make me mad. We was Baptists. She said, uh, I said, well, what, what's going on? She said, those Pentecostals always leaving the kids, uh, leaving the kids to God. She said, boy, you act up in school, I'm going to come up there and tear you up. Are you here? You can't leave your healing, your prosperity, the quality of your life to other. I don't care if they are preachers, the pastors, apostles. You got to get with that yourself. That's on you. I wonder what my mom say now. I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> I tell my kids all the time, boy, if your grandma was living, boy, I don't, I don't know about this move. Because <laughs> daddy got a little bit too much grace. You yeah. know, my mom come get you after you sleep. Yeah. Pop, pop. Thought I forgot. I did, but then I remembered. <laughs> Some of y'all had those pants, all right? Yeah, yeah. Some of that was cruel and unusual punishment. I do not recommend all of that. But my point is, my point is, you can't leave what you need up to the ministers of the church, the pastor, a prophet. You know, you, you have to get on the job yourself. Find your scripture. You say you heal, which, which scripture you're standing on? You say, you say you're gonna, your business is going to prosper. What scripture are you taking to God daily and tell, Lord, I thank you that this business is moving out. I thank you according to your word. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Philippians, you know what? And I know there's a lot of subjectivity. I know there's a lot of prejudice in this world. But God, your favor is greater than any man's prejudice against me. Your favor is greater. Amen. And because you're for me, no one can successfully be my enemy. Amen. Tell your neighbor, put in the work. That's what the world says. You know, you know the Bible says that the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of God? You, you know why they say that? Because the children of the world will do anything that it takes to make it. Poison water? We know that's wrong. They'll do all kinds of things just to go forward. But with, with we need to put ourselves in a place where the word of God is constantly in our mouth and in our heart. Everything about the kingdom of God is the heart. Always remember this. Once you get the word in your heart, you got it made. Once you get the word of healing in your heart, you're going to get better. I don't care if the doctor said you'd never do it. I don't care what the report is. Once you get that word in your heart, it's, it's got to go past your brain. 
Gotta go past your faculties. But once it gets into your heart, which is the real you, that boat won't sail. Once that prosperity gets to you, that boat's going to sail. Now remember this. The Bible says that the, the, the prosperity comes with persecution. It's going to come with persecution. You know, you keep, you keep on doing better and better, somebody's going to start hating on you. Amen. But I'd rather they hate on me prosperous. Because they're going to hate on you anyway. They hate on you broke. Amen. I'd rather them hate on me prosperous. Because they're going to hate on you. That's the way of the world. You will have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, let's go over to page two. Let's go over to page two. And uh, let's conclude with this. Well, I'm, so far, I'm doing good on my time. Everybody all right? Okay, let's go over here to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And I speak over your life today that things are going to get better. They're going to get easier. They're going to get lighter. I prophesy over you that you're getting stronger. And that you're getting an insatiable appetite for the word. I speak over you in this atmosphere that you're going to wake up and start looking for your Bible. I speak over you that you're going to begin to have a desire. Even those who don't like to read, you're going to have a desire for the Holy Writ. You're going to have a desire to start reading your Bible and listening to it. Amen. Until that thing begins to get in the city of your soul. Now, this is, this is definitely prophetic. The Spirit of God says, some of you, it's a little later in life, but you're going to get up and do the will of God like never before. Amen. You're going to see God. You're going to hear it. You're going to receive it. You're going to believe it. You're going to speak it. You're going to act on it. And your latter day will definitely be greater than your former days. Because your commitment to the word of God is going to be, going to be all in. Mark chapter 4, you there? Now this talks about, this, this parable says this. It talks about how the word of God will produce for you. And how the enemy, how the devil will try to stop you. From getting your 30, 60, 100 fold. So now it says in, in Mark chapter 4 verse uh, 13. It says. And he said unto them. Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? Meaning you got to get this parable down. You got to understand the word of God on this wise. It says the sower sows the word. Verse 14. Everybody see that? Mark 4, 14. The sower sows the word. Verse 15. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now let me say you this. The reason why he stole the word because they didn't receive it. They didn't deem it as legitimate. They didn't deem it as being worthy of, of committing themselves to hearing it more. They didn't receive it. And so what the devil did, he came and took that word right off the table. And their hearts were never sensitive to the things of God again. They never, they never got convicted on it. No more. Then it says, we got the next group of people. Verse 16. And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, they start shouting. Ooh. What have I got? Good word. It says, but they have no root 
in themselves. It, it says over here in um, uh, Psalms 92, I believe it's verse 13, Psalms 92, uh, verse 13. They that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You see, you, you got to be planted. Amen. Yeah, that, it, that's right. Psalms 92, 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. But it says here, it says that the stony ground people, they heard the word, they received it with gladness, but they didn't have any root in themselves. They wouldn't spend time in the word. You know, they wouldn't read the Bible for themselves. You know, they, they just want prayer, but they don't want God. I said they, they, they want a good life, they want to be blessed, but they don't want God. And the roots don't go down. It says in Psalms uh, 1, it says, verse 3, and, 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 and uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who brings forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, meaning that, that that's sickness and disease. He won't be, he, he, he won't, uh, uh, the enemy won't take him out. His leaves will not wither. And whatever he does will prosper. You know, your roots got to go down in this thing. You got to spend time in this thing. I used to say that uh, all the time, if we, if we read our Bibles like we read the newspaper, but your newspaper's gone now. But, so I say, if we read our Bibles like we are on our phones, if we read our Bibles like we do the social media, well, we all be flying around here. And you don't need to be knowing other people's business no way. They stupid for putting it on there. You know, that's another generation. My generation didn't tell all their business. Matter of fact, you come home from school and you done, you done told all the family business, you're going to get a whipping. What in the world is wrong? What? Mama better not hear what's going on in this house out there. Now folks getting caught, they so, they, they so uh, confused in their mind, they commit a crime and put it on, and, and put it on the media. Where is that coming from? Police, here I am. We just robbed over here, we're letting you know all the evidence is right here. We taped it. Somebody said, my roots go deep. I'm planted in the house of God. And I flourish everywhere I go. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to finish my message before the clock. So they said, hey, this, this group, the Stony Gown group, they, they heard the word. They received it with gladness. They're glad to go to church. They're glad to hear the word. But they don't want to put the work in. They don't want to read their Bible. What you do today? I went to church. Praise God. Hallelujah. I went to church. It was wonderful. The praise was high. Do you remember what the pastor preached? He sound good. Do you remember what he preached? He was okay. He got to sleep last night. But see, the emphasis is not on the word. It says, it says they didn't have their roots, and so they endured for a while. But after affliction, uh, the word affliction here means certain negative circumstances that bring you into offense. You know, negative circumstances. The devil done attacked your car. You went out, and now the car don't work. Then you get your car fixed and the stove broke. And now, now you, you, the, the stove gets fixed and, and the, your child gets suspended. All in one month. He said, I've been praying, seeking the Lord. Obviously, he ain't hearing me. No, he hear you. But you got you to gotta work this. You got to get some root in. You got to get the roots. Got to go down. Amen. This is, not, watch this. this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not magic. Faith is not magic. Faith 
We live by faith, meaning every day we're speaking the word. Every day we're hearing the word. Every day we're taking God at his word. Every day, you know, we're, 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 we're listening to the Lord and, 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 and asking him, hey, which way do I go? Guide me on this thing. It's a way of life. But life gets better because you're taking the counsel of of God. Now, you know, I've had some pretty good mentors. Some pretty, you know, you know, you, you can get around some people, you know, who really got it together, and that helps you. Amen? But now watch this. You're taking the counsel of God. You can't stay in the ditch. You can't stay down. You gotta go up. And so, so these people didn't have no root in themselves. They didn't have a word life. They had a church life, but they didn't have a word life. They loved gospel. Loved to sing. But now watch this. You need to sing the word. The word needs to be in song. You don't need to be singing all those unbelieving songs. I don't know if he will. I don't know if he will. I don't know if he will. I don't know. He will. He did. He said. Receive it. Take it as legitimate. Be open to some more. Put your heart into it. Trust it all the way. Say it on a daily basis. Touch the hem of his garment. Don't be offended because your roots don't go deep enough and you're not mature to the point where you can't endure hardness as a good soldier. The Bible says you got to endure hardness as a good soldier. You got to do this thing in season and out of season. When you get a pat on the back and when you get a slap upside the head, <laughs> it don't matter to you because your roots are going deep. And you're in it for God. And he's watching over you. He's taking care of you. He's blessing you. He's keeping you and yours. Amen. And you're trusting him all the way on. Tell your neighbor I'm blessed. Glory to God. Let's close out here. It says. They're offended. Now we said affliction is negative circumstances. Negative circumstances that uh, come your way and um, it brings pressure on you and causes you to be offended. Persecution is similar. It's negative circumstances brought on by people. One is circumstantial. It just happens. The car break down. The stove break down. You know. Uh, you, you know, you got flooding in your basement. You go downstairs. You look like you could you could jump on a boat and go through your basement. Water everywhere. You know, you're figuring out. You know what? If you call your insurance company, and they, they didn't even call you back for five days. Now you got mildew down there. Negative circumstances that are trying to get you off the word, and then persecution. That's negativity of people talking about you. You know, on purpose. You know. The supervisor talk to the manager about you because they want your job. So why the supervisor want your job? Because they salary you hourly and you've been hourly and they and now you making more money than them. So now they want to get you fired. So they, 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 you know, happens every day. And so persecution is negativity that comes on by people. Affliction is negativity that comes on by circumstances. And it says, you know, uh, they get offended and they stop the process of walking in the word. Verse 18, and, and these are they which are sown among thorns. They hear the word and the cares of this world. The cares of this world. I mean, they get distracted. It don't, that don't mean sin. You know, they just get, you know, it's football season. They got every game on. ESPN. ESPN. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know about all of them. 
You know, love me some ball game. I got them on even when I'm not watching them. But you, you, you can't let your focus be to the point where you to, you totally distracted. You, you know, by the time you're ready to read your Bible, it's uh it, 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 it's it's eleven thirty, and you read now your Bible with one eye open. And the Lord said to Moses. Get thee up. <laughs> I mean, this, this word to me, uh, to care, you just get distracted. The deceitfulness of riches. Ah, we didn't. It didn't say money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money's evil. It says the love of money. And you can love it and don't have a dime. And most people who love it don't have a dime. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. What is the deceitfulness of riches? I'm going to keep working and working and working. I miss church. I miss church. I miss fellowship. I keep working and working. And I think that once I get this money, I'm going to be all right. But all of you who are mature and, 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 and you're living good, you know money don't make you all right. More money make them come after you more. They just come after you more. Remember when you didn't have a credit card and you were trying to get one? No one would talk to you. Then you started making money, they come to you every week. And I just rip them up. Just cut them up. Just say, no, 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 no. The deceitfulness of riches. The lust of other things. That the lust of other things means an inordinate desire. I mean, you, you don't put in your mind that you got to have this at all costs. And it says, and it, it chokes the word. It chokes the word, and they become unfruitful. And then it says, verse 20, this is us. And these are they which are sown on good ground. They hear the word. They, they receive it as legitimate. Amen. They trust the Lord. Amen. They, they, they begin to declare it. Amen. Amen. They, they, they act on it. And they begin to bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Say this with me. I believe the word. It is my everything. I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. And I am blessed. I receive my healing, my promotion. My mind is being renewed. So that I see the things that I'm saying. I believe God. For the, for the greater and for the better. And for the better. I, rebuke I rebuke depression. I rebuke oppression. I rebuke oppression. All, all manner of mental harassment. Of mental Get, out Get out of my life. I see clearly. I see clearly. The, vision the vision is clear. I'm putting my heart into the word of God. I'm, I'm listening to it on a daily. I'm receiving it as legitimate. And I want to hear more. I'm believing the word. I'm trusting in what it says. I'm saying the word. I'm speaking it out of my mouth. The word is on my eyes. It's on my ears. It's in my mouth. It is the word of faith. I believe I've received Everything the word says. It is my time. It is my season. I'm not leaving it up to the pastor. I'm not leaving it up to the ministers. It's up to me. I believe God. And I'm increasing more and more. Me and my children. To the glory of God. Somebody give God some praise right now. Come on bless him. Come on, bless him. Somebody praise him. Somebody give him glory. Magnify his name. 
This is the way to prosper. This is, you'll never hear me say that you need to get in the $100 line, the $50 line, the $25 line. You know, the way you, the way you prosper is in the Word. Now, now, it can be by the Spirit of God if He has said it in that particular service. If God said, okay, if you sow, you know, I'm going to do that. But that's an oracle. But you hear me? So, make up your mind that this is your time. This is your season. You can always make up your mind. This is your time. You don't have to have nobody come prophesy over you. Yay, yay, verily, verily. This is your time. No, the, the Bible says it, any time can be your time. The word is nigh you, in your mouth and in your heart. Now it's your time. And it's the word of faith. You speak it. So I'm going to wait till the waters are trouble. I'm going to trouble the waters. I'm going to say what God says and the waters going to be trouble. And I'm going to see that word manifest to the glory of God. Bishop, you want to sing something for us?